Hey Cancerians, how y'all doing? Welcome. We're gonna be taking a look at your second half of December, general reading here. So in your meditation, short but, but very sweet, I saw an image from the film Nightmare Before Christmas, just like so perfect for this time of year. So I saw Jack Skellington um, in a scene from that film. If you haven't seen it, it's okay, I'll you know walk you through it. Uh, it's an image where he's in the graveyard and he's singing, um, I can't remember the song he's singing, but it, it's a bit of like a Hamlet moment for him where he's, you know, really contemplating his place in his current world and, you know, desiring change. And it's a certain like four of cups, you know, uh, energy where it's like, um, oh, I'm kind of dissatisfied with the way things are. I'm thinking these deep thoughts. I'm, you know, out here in the moonlight. And I just saw him like being in that setting underneath the moon and really sitting there and really contemplating all of these things on it. And he believes he's on his own. He's got his dog, you know, near him zero, but he's being watched in that scene of the film by the character Sally, who turns out to be his love interest, right? But the point of this is that up until this point and at this time, he doesn't know he's being watched by her. He doesn't even know that she's like madly in love with him and such a fan. Um, and, and it's just by, you know how they say like the way to, you know, attract your best opportunities, your best alliances, your best relationships, your, your best reality is to really step into the full light of who you are so that those that are vibrationally matched to you can find you. It's like that saying of your light is on, right? It feels like that. It feels like that. The fact that it was under a full moon as well, you being Cancer, is that your ruling planet? So I feel like this is very specific to you um, in the sense of when we think about the moon, our moon signs, it's our factory settings, right? There's an aspect of how who we inherently are from a soul place that we don't always like lead with or um, advertise, right? So there's that's a Jack moment too that he thinks is private, where he's really allowing his, you know, his his inner heart and inner thoughts and feelings to really be expressed again when he, and he thinks in a private space. So what I'm taking from this, I feel like there is, and I, I want to take an aspect of this literally, I don't want to say like, you know, you're being watched, but I, I, I feel like it's more like your light is on, you're, you're living your authentic self in a way by, by connecting to who's truly you, you're not putting a facade on, you're not coming from a place of like, you know, I'm doing what other people want me to, because within that context of the film, he's, he's, he's desiring something different, everyone around him. And Halloween Town, right? Is it Halloween Town? I think it's called Halloween. Anyway, Halloween Land um, loves the status quo, loves how things are. And he's like, no, I want to switch this up. This doesn't feel like it's right for me anymore. But not really knowing what to do with that or where to go with that, right? So I feel like this is an aspect of you being authentically yourself, right? That is allowing your light of vibration, right? To alert others to your presence. So I feel like Someone or, or a corporation or a company or someone important or a group is being made aware of who you are. They either like see you out and about or they, they see a picture, something like that, where your work precedes you or you by reputation or, or social media, like someone stumbles upon you. It's like, oh my God, they're perfect for this. Or, oh my God, I got to reach out to them. I just feel it. Something like that, where your inner vulnerability right, it is able to be seen by others and, it, and it's, and it's you know, tied to the authenticity of who you are. So it's drawing people or, or opportunity towards you. It's really, really fascinating. It's like the moon also represents receptivity, right? And being in a place where things come to you. And I feel like that's what we're looking at here. Uh, where it's like, you are really in a beautifully receptive place. It's, it feels like you're really in alignment, Cancers. It feels it feels really good. It feels like the only thing that could happen is for you to receive and be the recipient of, you know, this opportunity, goodwill, attention, reaching out. It, it feels really, 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 really positive. So, and it comes as a result of you having the bravery and the courage to be exactly where you are from a place of authentic truth and not trying to be somebody you're not really brilliant. It feels like a reward is, is just coming as a result of that. It's a vibrational thing. It's a law of attraction, right? It's really, really beautiful. So <laughs> with that being said, let's go ahead and see what your cards say. Hey, Cancerians, let's go ahead and see what your animal energy is for the second half of December. Animal. <laughs> I mean, when it's good, it's great. <laughs> okay. 
You got the cosmic egg here. That circle there represents that of spirit. This is a major arcana and even more so, like it's just even above a major arcana because it speaks of like you being in a place of destiny fate alignment really beautiful so this equates to that of the world key in the tarot which is like victory successful completion of a given cycle rewards acclaim it's it's throwing your hat up in the air and going yay it's such a stunning energy and so perfect that we're seeing this as a result of, of like coming off of that meditation this is exactly what we were talking about now fascinating fact this drawing originally was created by Jacob Bryant in the 1770s. And th I found this image many, many years ago in an old um, alchemy book like that my friend's mom had. It was like, it was a really, she had an amazing library. And I found this image and I read up about it at the time. I was like a teenager. And it talked about how it represents the birth of the philosopher and how this is the snake wrapped around the Orphic egg, right? And it was during this, you know, time of enlightenment where you know really thinking about you know these big questions about you know how things are versus what's working what not working and then and going into a brand new cycle so it's fascinating that with jack skellington like in the meditation thinking these deep thoughts he is the philosopher in the scene that i was seeing so it's really fascinating that that's coming up as a as a bit of a synchronistic moment as well but this speaks of just like you did it cancer you have completed some aspect of your cycle and the only thing that can come next is the fool because the world is the end and then we begin again with the fool which is brand new fresh starts new beginnings and taking a leap of faith so you're really in for a new cycle here it feels incredibly positive Let's see, <laughs> that took no time at all. So we're starting with another major arcana in the form of the emperor, let's talk. So this is Aries energy. You know, this is about responsibility, the patriarchy, really sitting in the full scope of your own authority and your responsibility. So what's interesting is I feel like this is, this is an aspect of your energy that has gotten you to where you are, right? Also, I got to point it out, Jack Skellington was the emperor. He was the, the head of the town. He wasn't the mayor, but I, I forget his title, but he, oh, he was the king, like the king of Halloween town. Please correct me in the comments. I don't know if it is Halloween town. Help me out. My Nightmare Before Christmas aficionados. So it, it's interesting the the weight that he felt, you know, he felt responsible for a lot of other people. And so it was sort of that practiced vigilance and authority and responsibility that allowed him to retain that position. But it was also the weight of everything, right? Like heavy lies the head that wears the crown. So there's that aspect of this as well. But I really feel like for you, there's an aspect of your path that says like you've been very vigilant to get to where you are. You've made some good choices. You've made responsible choices, right? And, and you're finding possibly that within the scope of your own experience, you may be questioning and wondering like what life looks like on the other side of where you've been. What are some possibilities or potentials that could come through to you? And, and what might those look like, right? Really thinking those deep questions, but also talk about being noticed and in the spotlight. It's, you know, part of this could also be coming as a result of you making decisions or going about your work in a way that gets you noticed, right? Okay, what else is going on here? <laughs> this is just like the reading of the major arcanas to die. Death. So Scorpio energy, you know, this is really, it's not surprising at all. It's another aspect of the cosmic egg in that it represents the ending of one cycle and the beginning of a new one. So we were talking about this, but I, you know, this is transformation, it's change. But there's an aspect to this as well that sort of speaks of, it calls into, you know, awareness, your relationship to change. You know, how do you feel about transformation? How do you feel about things looking quite different for you? What in your life, right, wants to be transformed or left behind or, or repurposed so that you can welcome the new? Because I'll tell you this, in my experience, the universe will not bring you anything, 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 anything that you desire that's new unless you are already balancing well what you already have going on. It's kind of like storage space on a phone or a computer. Like if you're about at maximum storage, you can't bring anything new on there. You gotta clear out some of that storage. And I feel like you're being asked to do this because what's coming on the other side of this cycle, you're gonna have new stuff that you wanna implement. Remember the fool energy, right? 
So I feel like this is kind of like, what, how can you clear out your storage space? It could be something like really pragmatic, like. I might want to stop doing this activity that takes up my time. I want to leave room for something new, or maybe I want to shift my work hours, or maybe I want to step away from this work and take some time to, to do something else. Maybe I want to, want to spend more time at home, or maybe I want to take some time to travel, or maybe I want to spend more time with the family. It, it's really about rearranging that, that storage space, as it were, releasing things so that you can you know, have new things come in. And it feels like as the emperor, you know, it's, 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 you're doing this from, you know, it's not arbitrary. It's something that you're consciously going about doing, which makes sense because for this time of year, it's very natural to look at where you've been in order to consider where you're going. You know, 2020. 22 that was that was a ride so what do you want to bring over into 2023 and what can stay in 2022 so that you have room for newness in 2023 right because we are looking at a full plate here right ah another full moon you don't say you know i had to tell you something i love when this comes up for cancers i do i love when it comes up for cancers because first of all that is your ruling planet of the moon like we talked about but eight of cups is brilliant because w when we align ourselves to this energy and we accept this opportunity we are willing to move away and leave behind experiences people places things aspects of ourselves that are keeping us from our wish fulfillment because what's on the, what's on the other side on, down this river it's nine of cups which is wish fulfillment and an abundance right so this is another aspect of what we were just talking about, of clearing up some of that storage space, right? But here's the thing. The fact that this is cups and this is coming up in this context, I do feel like some of the clues around what wants to be cleared from the storage space take up emotional space. It's something that is an emotional matter. It could either really you know, take a lot out of you emotionally or something about your work or how you operate or your relationships just feels like it's taking up a lot of emotional space. And you're like, you know what? I want to clear some of this so that I have more room, for not just for new things, but for me so that I have more emotional availability, right? You really could be in a line of work or in situations or even caretaking other people who require a lot of emotional availability and a lot of emotional bandwidth. And it's just going, could we shift some of that? Could, could we change up the ratio on that? so that I have some more space for myself or space for other people or things. There's something about this, being willing to let go of certain things in favor of what's to come, right? Even though you may not know exactly what it's gonna look like, the universe will reward you. And I, I, I cannot even, maybe one day I'll tell you about it in my This Is Me series, but I cannot tell you the number of times in my life that I've made those hard choices and decided to walk away from things or shift something or edit something that felt scary to do so, but the universe rewarded me soon after by bringing me something new to, to fill that void. So this is the fact that this is coming through for you and we're looking at the, the end of the year here before going into the new one. It just feels very, very timely. Also, salmon medicine says that, but also fish medicine in general, says that we align with what is ours by going with the flow, right? That's the river, that's the salmon. We align by going with the flow. It's it's. <laughs> This is stunning. I also want to say that this is the only minor arcana you have. Now, when a minor arcana comes up, that means that, you know, you have choice. You always have choice. But majors, it's it's destined fated events, it's soul marker moments, it's karmic contracts, all of that, right? So you can control how you respond to these things. But minors, if you don't like it, you can shift this. So this is really up to you. I do feel like for a group of you guys, it's possible that this may come up in reverse and it may, and that's okay. Which means it might take you some time that extends beyond this two week period, <laughs> hello. It might take some time for you really to get to the core, like having your Jack Skellington Hamlet moment where you're really, really thinking those deep thoughts of, let me be honest and really connect in with myself, my emotional core, my moon self. And, and, and what, what is really working and what's not? What do I, if I'm really honest with myself, like what do I really want? Where do I wanna be? How do I want to more than anything? How do I want to feel, right? It may, it may take you a little bit more time to get clarity around that so that you can move on down this river, but all good, right? So let's go ahead and get some advice. Get some advice from the Cancers. I'm hearing intuitive dreams. Pay attention to your dreams because I feel like some of that can be 
illuminated. Oh, hello, 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 and goodbye, and hello again. Wheel of Fortune is your advice. Another major, allow the wheel to turn, embrace change, know that what's coming as of, like, this is so brilliant. Did I not say that things are coming to you? You've been noticed, the word has gotten out, you're attracting uh, through a vibrational place, people, places, things, opportunities, they're aligned to your authentic self. Hello. This is you attracting an opportunity with a boss that gets you. This is you attracting an opportunity with a, a partner that really sees you and appreciates you for who you are. This is you attracting, you know, situations and opportunities that are directly aligned with your soul purpose and that don't feel like work and, and just feel like it, it's just really satisfying on a deep soul level. Allow the wheel to move in your favor. This is really saying embrace change. Look at that snake here, like on the cosmic egg. Embrace change, death key, allow for transformation and understand that by doing so, you're not only you know partaking in the natural cycles of life in your human experience, but you are refusing to be in stagnant murky waters and choosing to move on down this river. And going, I understand that change is not just you know a constant of life, but change allows me to have freedom and choice and opportunity. I feel like you're being asked to consider your relationship to change because these are all fixed signs here, right? What with the world key, fixed signs are represented. So I, I feel like there's an aspect of this that's asking you to really look at, you know, what is your relationship to change, any fear around it, and really consider that because there's a lot of change that wants to come your way, but you're being asked to really do a deep dive like a like a water sign only can and really consider, you know, is there any fear coming up around that? Are you having trouble choosing what to clear out of your storage space? Because this wheel wants to turn in your favor, but it's but it's it can't move until you've cleared out some of the the things that have no place in, in where you want to go in the next year or years, right? Allow the wheel to turn in your favor. Let's get an article. Let's get an oracle. <laughs> well, hello. The lady of the mirror, reflection, non-judgment. I mean, hello. Reflective waters, moonlight, four plus four is eight. Eight of cups, eight is the number of financial abundance. Reflection, non-judgment. This, this is exactly what we've already been talking about really looking at your, you know, what you, your relationship to change, what you may be afraid of, what you're unwilling to let go of. And honestly, get, just getting really honest with yourself, right? What is no longer working? What wants to be transformed? It might feel a bit scary because you don't know exactly what's on the other side of it. But if it's not working, then it's not worth holding on to for any, any reason, right? This is really beautiful, Cancer. <laughs> I'm really, I'm, you know, also with this, the non-judgment part, I want to talk about that for a minute. When we embrace these questions and self-reflection from a place of curiosity, we open ourselves up to all information. But when we're coming from a place of judgment, we, we can only get a small piece of the, you know, pie, a small skewed piece because judgment is a restrictor. And it's not going to allow that wheel to turn, but you approach this feeling and this work in this time with a place of curiosity Oh boy, that's going to allow you to see everything, every single aspect of the picture within yourself. This can come up when you're thinking about what's not working anymore. Just to give you an example, let's say that you've been at a job where you feel really, you know, like you you worked hard to get there. You, you have a relationship with your coworkers and you feel a sort of guilt about even acknowledging, like, I don't think this is working for me anymore. And fear, because if I, if I leave this job, what, what, what am I going to do? But it's, it's not just about realizing this and then cutting it off. It's about realizing it and then setting an intention to attract something else and, and being ready and open and willing to recognize it as it comes along and then being willing to make that shift and change. You see what I'm saying? It's setting that intention. It's not, it's not being dramatic and, and just going, okay, snip, snip. It, it's just about being mindful about it and first being aware because awareness has to come first. That awareness is what's going to move that wheel. So you guys as Cancers, you're very connected to your heart chakra. It's a beautiful thing. 
but it can also, you know, a shadow aspect of yourselves can feel like a bit caretakery, like a bit over obligated, like, like, you know, maybe you, you don't want to leave because people need you or you don't want to transition anything because, you know, but there's a guilt associated with it, right? But that's, that's coming up for you to really look at and be transformed. Really look at the core roots of that because it's not founded or based in who you actually are and the reality of things. It's how things are reflected to you in the moonlight from your past and maybe even a shadow aspect of self. So again, curiosity and non-judgment will make the reflection clear. It's really, really beautiful. Yes, it really is. So with that being said, I am sending you so many blessings for your second half of December. Thank you so, so much for being here. And yeah, let me know in the comments if this helps and resonates. I love hearing from you guys. Um, you know, Cancerian videos are my, usually like my lowest watched, lowest interacted with videos. So I would ask and encourage you to comment and interact if this is for you and really help build up the Cancerian community because that's part of what this channel is about as well, is bringing together like-minded people and within, you know, so that they have a place to converse and share. So along with that, I would say, you know, with this reading being what it is, I would absolutely, you know, ask and encourage you to to interact in the comments and and really share and i would so appreciate that so with that being said thank you thank you so much for being here and most of all and as always thank you for being you and be well until next time